My name is Ken Nolan. I'm with WellWorks, and today we're going to be talking about sucker rod string and a pump demonstration. What happens in a well as that pumping goes up and down, it's a dynamic uh, condition that's going on, and this uh, demonstration with springs and weights will try to demonstrate that in a very simple form, hopefully, that you people can understand. First of all, I'd like to explain what this diagram is all about up here on the board and what, it's, uh, what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be looking at uh, various things like uh, surface and pump card shape with a, uh, with a full pump. We're not looking at fluid pounds, friction, uh, all kinds of effects that's going on uh, that can go on and weld. We're going to look at standing valve and trailing valve opening and closing. We're going to look at uh, pump stroke versus surface stroke. We're going to look at rod stretch reduces pump stroke and over travel increases pump stroke. Uh, uh, pump spacing, how you go about doing that, why you need to do that, and, and keep it close. Uh, rod string dynamics and waveform, uh, coulomb or drag friction, and viscous friction effects. We'll talk a little bit about that. And here we go. Uh, when you're looking at this these, these diagrams here. First of all, what is the coordinate system? Over here you have load. This is standard in the industry with dynamometer analysis. Uh, load increases upwards and you have a zero and then this is negative load. That's positive load. Okay. Down here is polish rod position. We have instruments that measures load at the polish rod. That's what PR is telling us. So as a card, as this pump pumping unit goes up and down, you're creating this card at the surface, and then we're calculating this card using the wave of equation theory from that data from the surface card. And uh, then we'll talk about the operation here. Okay, this is the upstroke. All the way to here, this is the downstroke. Down here at the pump, this is the upstroke, and this is the downstroke. Now what I'm going to try to do here with this, this jig, or this simulator, is uh, show what happens when you make, start to make the upstroke. And it'll be demonstrated over here on the board, as well as on this so-called jig. All right, the pumping unit is at the bottom of the stroke. The polish rods at the bottom. Now we're going to simulate what happens when you start the upstroke. You notice down here at the bottom is a jar full of, uh, partially full of shot, lead shot. And that uh, simulates the fluid load. The springs simulate the rod string. You normally think of the rod string as being very stiff with very little stretch, but it's not true. When you have 10, 5 or 10,000 feet of rods, they stretch a lot, especially when they're fiberglass. They stretch four times more than steel stretches. So this condition that we're showing here is realistic in a sense. And I can simulate it with just some door springs. Okay, we start our upstroke. And you notice that uh, the jar down there, which is we call the pump, is has a fluid load on it. It's trying to pick it up, but the pump's not moving. You just that fluid load weighs thousands of pounds, so as you start up on the upstroke, the rod string is stretching, but the pump's not moving. And right there, it starts moving. See there? It's loose now. It came off of the floor. So we move from point one, and the, the, tra the traveling valve is closed at that point. You're picking up the fluid load. Now we're at point two. Now the standing valve open. <laughs> The standing valve opens at this point because you're moving the pump. The pump starts moving. And once it starts moving, the standing valve has to open, doesn't it? You're taking the load off of it. And so it'll open and fill with whatever fluids there to fill with. So now we're at this point, point two. The standing valve is open. And all this leading here is rod stretch. And you can measure it. I mean, it's very clear. Now, when you start moving the well faster, dynamics start appearing. We're going to look at that later. But right now, we're looking at statics kind of conditions. In other words, a pump, pumping speed right now is uh, 
We, we'll say that uh, SPM is less than one stroke a minute. So if that's, if that's the case, there's very little dynamics going on, and what I'm trying to demonstrate up here is pretty close to the truth. Okay, we're at point two. Now we're going to finish making the upstroke. And I'm moving from these two red connectors here on my rod. I'm going to move it up to this one. Okay, now I made, this is my surface stroke. And if I want to measure that, That's about 17 inches. But my pump only moved about nine and a half. That's, that's this amount right here. Excuse me, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, about nine and a half. So I moved this far, but my pump moved nine and a half inches because I just measured it. All right, so uh, my pump is now uh, at the top of the stroke. So I'm, I went from point two to point three. And the minute that pump stops moving upwards, what's the standing valve going to do? It's going to drop on seat. The gravity it mainly is what closes it. So the standing valve drops on seat. Now I'm at point three. Now I'm going to start down. Now when I start down, there's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> On a downstroke, my simulator doesn't work, so I use a roll of, of paper towels. Because when I, when I start down, what's going to happen? I'm going to have to start relieving my fluid load, and in, in order to do that, the pump is that you got to relax the rod string because when I start down, the, the pump is full. I have, I have low pressure below it and high pressure above it. So I have to get rid of that fluid load. So I'm at point three and I'm going to point four. And what's going to happen is that the, standing, the traveling valve is going to open and my pump's just going to sit there. Well, I'm just making my pump sit there right now with that roll of... of paper. So, okay. Now I'm going to move from point three to point four. And so I've got to remove my paper here and then it'll move down back down where we were. Now I made my cycle. See, I had, that's, I had to prop it up to get rid of the fluid load. But now I'm down and the rod string is relaxed. And I'm at this point. And then I'll make my downstroke. I'm back to point one. And then I'll start over again. Downstroke. I've made my downstroke. So, okay, that's what it looks like here. But my pump doesn't move. I'm picking up the fluid load. Moves through the upstroke. When I get to the top and start down, it doesn't move. But my rods are relaxing. I'm get, I go on downstroke, and there's where the, the trailing valve opens. Then I make the finish the downstroke, and that's the pump guard. Why does the cord lean to the right at the surface? That's rod stretch. And so that lim limits the pump stroke. You can't have uh, running real slow. You're always going to have less pump stroke than surface stroke because of rod stretch. Okay. So that part I can demonstrate pretty well. Now when you uh, start talking about uh, other things like standing and trailing valve opens, here we go. The trailing valve starts out as it's closed. The standing valve opens at the point two. The standing valve closes at point three. The trailing valve opens at point four. And, and then the same thing is occurring at the pump. Okay, now we're going to talk about pump spacing. 
I start out, I go down and tag the pump. Right now the pump is tagging or on the floor here. Now I know I have to pick it up a certain amount because of the, of, uh, the fluid load is going to stretch the rods and the fact that I'm moving the rod string, we call that uh, over travel effects that uh, will cause the pump spacing uh, to be a little bit more complicated. So we usually uh, have formulas that do a pretty good job of estimating where the pump space spacing is going to be. But when you get the well operating, you can get a better handle on that. So uh, then you have to play with the pump spacing by moving the, the polish rod up or down to get uh, the, the pumps properly spaced so that you don't hit down, you don't hit up, and yet your clearance from the pump is on the bottom, your traveling and standing valve are close to bottom, and if you have any gas, it doesn't have any gas expansion effects, which reduces the effective uh, displacement of the pump. So it does become very important on gassy wells. It's not so important on wells that do not make gas. You just don't want the, the pump to hit down or up. Okay, so we start out and we, we say, okay, we need to space the pump. We'll, we'll pick it up. And, uh, and let's say we think that the pump ought to be spaced right about there. Okay, now when I start pumping, if I just go real slow in the yellows of the, and, I, and I come on down and I don't have a problem, do I? As long as I'm running slow, I'm, this is my surface stroke in my right hand here, everything is normal. But what happens when I start running six or eight, ten strokes a minute? Now I'm going to try to, it's hitting down, isn't it? What's causing that? That's over travel. And that load can be horrendous when it hits. When the pump is hitting down, the clutch at the top of the pump takes that load and it's uh, thousands of pounds. It's like your pickup truck dropping on top of that pump over and over again at six or eight strokes per minute. Well, it doesn't take very long to destroy the pump. So you don't want it to hit down. So, okay, how, what do you have to do? You just have to space it higher. That's called the over-travel effect. Because once you get all that inertia going in that rod string, it wants to keep on going. And so now we, we don't have a, a static problem anymore. Maybe we're running 10 strokes a minute or something like that. Well, if we start running faster, everything is going to, is going to start changing. And, uh, and so that's a little thought here about uh, where, where we're going with this to, to demonstrate this. So if we're running pretty fast, 8, 10 strokes a minute, you're going to have a lot of what we call over-travel effects. And, and how is this going to affect our card shape? Well, let me give me the liberty here of doing a little drawing. It's going to have effects like this. As you pick up that fluid load, your card's going to change. It's going to be, I'm going to dash this. It's going to go up like this. That's a dynamic load right there. It's higher than if you're moving very, very slow. You're moving fast. So when you get that fluid load, that creates a wave that's running up down the rod string. And it, and it gives you a higher peak that would be peak polish rod load right there. And then it'll bounce around like this come and come back down. Okay, now you're at the top of the stroke. You drop the fluid load off. More dynamics is created. And, uh, and so you get a minimum load at the surface. looks like that. And so you, there's your surface card. It looks altogether different than the pump card, doesn't it? Now I'm running maybe... Uh, I've been strokes per minute, maybe greater than six strokes a minute or something like that. Let's say eight. We'll get, to, we'll get put the dynamics up there pretty high. Well, what is that going to do to the pump stroke? Okay. The pump stroke is going to change. When you get down to the bottom of the stroke, just like we were seeing, there's over travel. And if you don't space the right pump correctly, it'll hit down. So at the bottom, you, you saw that demonstrated here, you, the, the, it just keeps on going. This is over travel, OT. 
it'll over travel a little on the top. When you go around the top, it'll keep going. It's got all that inertia in the rod string. The rod string is, is like a long spring, and so it'll go a little bit further at the top of the stroke. Most of the over travel occurs at the, at, the, at the bottom, where it reverses at the bottom. Well, heck, if you look at this real close, you say, man, this is a good thing. If you're not pumping off the well, you want as much pump stroke as you can get. And so uh, when I'm running eight strokes a minute, I'd like to see that pump longer than my surface stroke. Well, it could be. Yeah, the, pumping, the pump stroke can be much longer than surface stroke, especially with fiberglass sucker rods. And by the way, uh, the main reason you buy fiberglass sucker rod, number one reason, is to get over travel effects and produce more fluid with a given size pumping unit. It has other benefits like it's lighter and uh, that's, it allows you to use smaller pumping units. But the biggie is over travel effects which uh, puts oil in the tank and that's and gas in the pipeline. And that's why we like that over travel. Um, so let's see where we can go from here. We talked about rod string dynamics and waveform. Okay, this is, this is the dynamic effects. That becomes your peak, rod, peak polish rod load, not this, but this is now. This is your minimum polish rod load, not this. And your pump stroke is increased. Okay, the next thing I'd like to demonstrate is the waveform that you're seeing up here. See if we can simulate that with this contraption here. And what I'm going to do is uh, get, the, get the rod string vibrating like it does in a, in a well. This is vibration of the rod string shown here. Let's see if we can get something like that with this, uh, this demonstration. Isn't this a neat idea here? I've got a pin here. This is a dynamometer up here. Here's a spring-loaded dynamometer, and it's going to record what's going on at the surface, and that pump's way down there going back and forth due to the dynamics. So that's, that's where I'm going with this. And you know, you can go out there in the field and stop a, a unit abruptly, and you'll hear it go clunk, clunk clunk, clunk, like that, uh, from the uh, wave running up and down the rod string affecting the pumping unit at the surface. So uh, this is not figments of people's imagination. This is really going on. So, okay, now we got, we got the thing going up and, uh, going up and down at a certain pumping speed. And let me let the dynamics kind of settle down here. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, this paper is a dynamometer recording device and uh, the stylus here is recording load. And I'm going to move the paper from left to right, that's position. Load versus position. And let's see what I get here. There's a dyno cord. Now you know you can practice a little bit. I'm not uh, doing this perfectly, but uh, you guys build one of these things and then you can practice. Another dyno cord. <laughs> Let's do number three. You got to do three if you do any. You ought to be, get better with time. All kinds of dyno cards. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm going to show you the effects of drag friction, or sometimes referred to by a fancy name of Coulomb friction, but it's just the rod drag between the boxes on the on the rod string and the tubing. That's a, a biggie, and can be a very detrimental to, to the operation of the well. And it also uh, makes it harder to diagnose because it 
kind of hides the pump card below all that friction and distorts the card. Now uh, there's work going on to try to simulate th that drag effects. Once you have a, a deviation survey, you know how the hole wanders around and deviates as it goes down. And now if you've got that, uh, mathematically you can calculate how much drag is occurring along the rod string uh, uh, that we're showing here, just a mathematical modeling of it. Now we've, we have programs like that now for design purposes. However, when you're diagnosing a well with dynamometers, uh, that's not available. Uh, in, when NABLA was in business, that was Dr. Gibbs and I, uh, we had a program that was working pretty good, but uh, we, yeah, we uh, retired from the company for various reasons and sold out to Lufkin, and at that time they were going to carry it out and one thing happens and then another. Lufkin gets bought out by General Electric and that gets put on the back burner and it's never been uh, uh, brought to fruition. But that needs to be done. That's a big carrot out there. With all the deviated wells we have nowadays, we need to know uh, how to diagnose them better and we need to know the effects of friction. And, and that's, that's, that's a carrot. Anybody out there listening to this, if you have that ability to model rod strings mathematically in a crooked well, that's a, a good project to work on. Well, anyway, let's see what happens here. If, uh, you know, we could let, get that going like that and go to lunch and come back and it's still going. That's because there's no friction. And, uh, and uh, if you had a frictionless well, what we measure up here and what we compute for the pump card would be perfect. It would. It wouldn't be any question about the, the getting an accurate pump card. It's called, after my business partner, the Gibbs Conjector. Boy, if we could just, didn't have all that friction down there, we could do the perfect job. The problem is we have it. And that's what I'm talking about. We need to f find out what is how to deal with the friction. And I know it's feasible. And I know it's possible. It's just to get the right people working on the problem. Anyway, uh, here we go. Now, if, if you don't have a straight hole, it's not going to be going up and down like that, is it? It's going to be dragging here, there, and yonder, wherever there's a dog leg. And what does that do to this uh, dynamic effect that's going on? Well, this is what it does. It damps it. And so it, when you've got a case like that, the, the friction causes your load to increase and damps it. And uh, it, this card is, uh, is right, you measured it right, but how do you take care of it between here and that pump? You don't know where it's occurring and how much drag you have, effects you have at various depths. And if you can't take that into account, this is gonna be distorted, highly distorted. I have one more thing to say, and that is uh, the friction has two, has two forms. Uh, ones we just talked about, drag friction, which is the worst one in the industry, but you also have viscous friction. And that occurs along the rod string, and it's velocity dependent. The faster you run the pumping unit, the more fluid you're making, the more vis viscous friction you have. That we can simulate pretty well uh, and take into account. It's a velocity dependent term that uh, knowing what you have up here, how much of it due to fluid friction, and now you can get a pretty good pump card and your diagnosis is fairly accurate. Uh, not so with Coulomb friction. I'm Ken Nolan, that concludes my demonstration, and thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.